This podcast is sponsored by Panda Design, a design company specializing in graphic and web design, along with complete brand and marketing solutions. Visit www.pandadesign.com, that's double I in design, and mention Guna Ramble for 10% discount on orders over £250. And welcome to a Guna Ramble. I'm your host James, and joining us today, we've got Amanda. Amanda, how you doing? Long time. Yeah, I'm good. How are you, JJ? Uh, better than I was yesterday. My oh. heart's calmed down. Yeah. Yeah, the um, the lining in the sofa's still there. So yeah, so I sort of nearly tore it a bit yesterday. But I've aged about ten years since yesterday afternoon. No, oh, so you're only thirty-one now. Smooth, JJ, smooth. <laughs> that's smooth. Thank you. Uh, no, 30, actually. Like silk. And uh, you obviously heard there joining in. It's Clive. Clive, how are you doing, mate? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. How many Sam Miguel's was it yesterday? I saw the other yeah. WhatsApp group. <laughs> yeah, quite a lot, actually. Uh, I burst into my clubhouse and let all the Spurs boys know all about it. So uh, it's good. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be done after a result like that, hasn't it? Especially to calm yep. You need more to calm down than celebrate it. Yeah, they're good fun, but um, they were thinking, we have to remember, when we're watching the game, we're thinking, come on, can we score? But every other fan, Spurs, Man United, Liverpool, they were they were hoping we'd blow it. And of course we didn't, right? So, um, yeah, it's great. Oh, God. <laughs> don't, don't, don't talk to me about the Man United fans, all of them yesterday, texting me like, oh, fuck, you Arsenal getting these late goals and seven minutes of extra time. I'm like, do you remember 10 years ago or so? I'm like, I'm like you, 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 you won leagues off the back of this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was it was uh, all good fun in the end yesterday. But uh, going into it from the start, um, another slow start for Arsenal. This is happening quite quite a lot recently. Um, Amanda, what, what, why do you think that is? Why, why do you think Arsenal is so slow to start the games these days? I don't know because at Everton and City, we had a great, you know, really good first half and second half. We were diabolical. At the moment, it's like we can't play first half, only second half. If this continues, I want half my season ticket money back. Because at the moment, we're only watching 45 minutes. Right? I've, I've, I've never seen us do this regularly. You know, there have been times where we've started slow, the odd game. But it's becoming a pattern. I really don't know, to be honest. Um, it, it's not great, though, is it? I mean... I don't know. I can't answer you. What do you think, Clive? I think um, it's um, when I when I watch them, when I watch us at the moment, I'm, I'm getting the same sort of um, emotions all the time. As soon as we start, we just look slow, and by that I mean there isn't the intensity of movement, there isn't the intensity of pass. The passing is slow. It's it's sloppy. It's encouraging people onto us. It's not establishing any sort of technical authority. It's not, it's not establishing any sort of pattern. We're just passing the ball around and we're sort of sleepwalking into some, I call it a six out of 10 game, right? We're just sleepwalking into it and we all know it. We can all tell. We're all experienced Arsenal watchers and we can all tell in the first five minutes what we're going to get for the first half. We can see it and it is becoming a pattern now. And what it does to me, it, it's almost like we level the playing field. So this happened at Preston, same thing. You know, this happened at Bournemouth. This has happened a few times now. Well, we're meant to be Arsenal. We're meant to be the big club. But we just go out there and we match the opposition. And we almost uh, are a product of the environment that we're within. So if we're playing the better side, we up it slightly. But if we're playing the not so good side, we allow ourselves to go down to their levels. And for me, Arsenal's main, you know, main trick is their technique at speed. And that's what, that's what separates us. We're not big. We're not super strong, but we're quite technical, but we can, we've got a high technique at high speed. So if you slow us down, I always say it, we become targets for aggression. We become targets for physicality. And in England, you are allowed to kick people 
unless you're Granit Xhaka, you're allowed to kick people and um, and level it out slightly. And um, that seems to happen quite a lot. And I think we've got to do, you know, if you look at us statistically, we've, we've been a lot better when we scored early. And when we've scored, you know, not scored in the first half, it's been a bit, it's been a bit dramatic. And, and that, that carried on uh, on Sunday. Mm. Do, you, do you think, Clive, it's it's like you said, it's not it's the, the lack of pace to an extent as well in the system that we're in. But do you think it's the efficiency and everything as well when we're moving the ball around? Because for me yesterday, uh, I know we'll go more into specific players uh, a bit later on and everything, but yeah. I thought the movement and everything was there, but it was just like... Slow. Typ- it was slow, but as well as that typical Arsenal from old where it's like... Okay, now put your put your leg through it and shoot it. Just you know all that typical, you know where everyone is like, just shoot, just shoot. Yeah. It seemed that Ramsey, uh, who I did think had a cracking game, uh, he he took one quite early where he he took like four touches, and I'm like, in the second or the third one, if he wrapped his foot round that, it could have even been a goal, or the keeper would have parried it out, could have got a rebound. It's, it's that sort of thing again, where it's just like, are we trying to walk this in, and we trying to create that perfect goal again? I think. Um... You know, we've all got things that we like when we watch football. And I, and I do like a faster game, a more intense game. I like a more athletic game. And when, you know, in the first few minutes, the first, the only player I see at that level is Alexis every week. He just turns up, he hits his level, he gets on the ball, he's busy, he's intense, he's agile, he's tricky. And my eyes just go to him and I look around and think, well, where's, the, where's the rest of you? Are you on this level? And, and the rest of them take a little while to warm up. I call it, you know, at Arsenal, I, I call it, we have two types of games. And I call this what I call a cat Z game. And you don't want to know what I mean by that. The, t- the teams that turn up, that we're going to get 70% possession, that we know it as fans. The players know it. They know that Burnley are going to sit in and try to go early down the sides into Andre Gray and run us back and try to get some territory and play from there try and buy a foul on the halfway line, go big diagonals on three kicks and play from there. We know that's coming and the players know it and they're, they're probably they're, they're probably quite bored of it, to be honest. They, and it, it takes a lot to raise yourself, you know, to um, especially when you're expected to win. But as fans, we're, we're seeing all the results. We're seeing the Spurs City have a, you know, a, a 2-2 draw. We're seeing Man United just scrape away with a draw. We're seeing Liverpool, you know, mess up versus Swansea, and we're thinking, this is our chance. And that anxiety that we all feel, we then look what's on the pitch in the first you know, 45 minutes, and we're thinking, well, you're not matching our anxiety with the urgency that we expect. And I think that's what transmitted to me. And then we thought, okay, let's stay cool. Let's go into the second half. But it's too many times now, I don't think we're quite respecting the first half. And we're playing, and I've said it before, we're playing 2-0 up football at nil-nil. And I think, you know, we're trying flicks, we're trying Mabonas, we're trying Scorpions, we're trying scissor kicks. Just do the basics uh, at nil-nil. Respect the opposition, respect the game, and everything will be fine. But um, I think sometimes we are a little bit lackadaisical until Venga gets them at half-time and sorts them out. Mm-hmm. And... Um... One thing I will point out yesterday, which I thought was a lot better, especially uh, first half and then obviously second half because it brought a goal. I thought the uh, set pieces yesterday were a lot better than what they've been for many a year. Even I thought I thought they were fantastic. They were, you know the short ones between Ozil and uh, Sanchez. I mean, um, it led to that chance for Iwobi, which obviously yeah just went wide because Shelney had the header that was caught, and then. Um, I think Olivier Giroud, was it Giroud or Koscielny again from Ramsey, pinged in such a really good ball. I'm trying to think of who it was. I think it was Giroud. I'm not quite, I'm not, not quite sure, sure if I remember. I thought, I thought they were better. Uh, Amanda, you know, there was a bit, of, there was a few chances in that first half. Obviously, Mustafi as well was doing the old American football quarterbacking with his long balls, which were <laughs> good. And uh, Ozil, he launched it over. You thought, oh, is he going to do a Bulgaria again? But then he fell over his own feet. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I didn't actually find that the first half was that bad. We, it wasn't one of those that we sat there and went, this is so boring. Really? Um, no, I, I, no, I've, I've seen far worse on television, the atmosphere translated into like, oh. people are bored shitless here. I mean, I was bored watching it, let alone at home, let alone in the The atmosphere, ground. there wasn't any atmosphere. Absolutely. No, I remember <laughs> talking to my cousin 
are we actually going to sing today? You know, and then Burnley sung, which brought us to sing. But no, I didn't think the first half, I've seen far worse than that, James, honestly. Mm. Um, it just wasn't coming together. But Clive's right with the flicks. and uh, <laughs> You know, we are not 2-0 up. And even at 2-0, I don't want to see that. So um, we need to go back to the basics. I can't work out what's going on. Why are they coming out so lacklustre? Why? You know, we haven't played all week. There's no excuse. You know, no disrespect to Burnley. It's not Liverpool, United, Chelsea, Tottenham, is it? It's it's not that you've got to, you know, play the game and be be sensible. We've got to go at Burnley. We're at home. Mm. It's like, I don't get it. And honestly, I don't have an answer for it. And, you know, normally I do. <laughs> but I don't have an answer. I don't understand why we're only playing 45 minutes. And Clive, you're wrong. It's not only the second half. Everton and City were the first halves we were good. The second no, I half. said for, I first halves, that's what I was saying. I agree with you. First halves are the ones that we're not very good in. But, but ever, maybe Everton and City, we were decent. We were. Time, so. It was the other way around. I was at City away. Um, <clears throat> and I, was, I wasn't I was with sitting with the Arsenal. And I was sitting with City fans, a couple of Arsenal around me. And I was thinking, oh, my God, we're doing really well. You know, we are doing really well here. Come out second half. They didn't actually come out the second half, you know. Exactly. And it's I gone just, the other way around now, has it? It's Preston, yeah, Bournemouth, yeah, you're and right. now and, Burnley. It's and, gone the other way. It's been the but, first half. But been overall, slow. Clive, it's one half we're playing. Now, yeah. I can't put my finger on it. Now, if we're going to discuss yesterday, right, um, we, we did pile the pressure on in the second half. And obviously, you know, if we're going to go through instant after instant and everything... Um, I would like to talk about Xhaka if that's okay. Or are we going to talk about that later? Uh, I was I was going to leave it for a bit later on if that's alright. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I was going to I was going to talk about everything else uh, first. I mean, obviously the the first half ended. Like I said on the TV, the atmosphere looked dead. So I was going to ask you Amanda about that, but you've already cleared that up for me. It was, you know what? From my point of view, I've seen far worse. There was yeah. one game I think in the last ten years. I think it was Palace at home. I can't remember. I actually nearly fell asleep. It's never happened to me in my life, ever. I was so bored. I didn't feel like that yesterday. And also, because the way we are playing, I suppose the last five or ten minutes of the first half, you're thinking, well, we're going to come out second half, you know. And people were sort of expecting, because it's become like that, hasn't it? Mm. Um, but no, I didn't think it was terrible. There wasn't much atmosphere. We did try. We sung once Burnley sung. Um, it wasn't great, but... Sometimes you just got to take the points and say, next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100% agree. Well, again, uh, touching on the second half now, like I said, with the corners, it was another short one that led to uh, Mustafi being fouled by, I think it was Andre Gray. Uh, you guys, was that a death for, for me, defo penalty every day of the week? But uh, what, what did you guys think? That I Sorry, I sit there. That exactly where mm. Mustafi was brought down, I sit above in the East stand. Yeah. And I've got um, a very close mate of mine who is a referee. Okay, he referees football games. That's all I'm going to say. And I've, I'm sick to death of arguing with him over penalties, handballs, everything, because he's always right. Because he obviously is he's, he's in the referees' association. Yesterday, he said to me straight away, that was a penalty. I was so shocked because I was convinced it was. But remember, in the ground, you don't get replays. All right, you get that split second, which is what the ref gets. And the linesman. I don't blame the referee for that one. I blame the linesman. I don't know where he was. Because it was, for me... He was so looking right at it. <laughs> yeah, he was looking it? right at it. The ref, the ref was right there as well. That's the, that's the thing. And he, he uh, made the motion that the staff he dived. Then if he so I'm like, well, yeah, you've got to book him. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm saying, you've got to book him. If you've, if you've said he's dived, you've got to book him. You've got to you go through with it. You don't do the dive um, mm. Like action, if you're not going to put yeah. him, because yeah. then it's not a dive. So make your mind up, referee. Because um, yeah, I was screwed at the telly. I was like, well, because Mustafi was going, then he was going to him. Like, well, then if I have dived, you've got to book me then. That's but right. It was, yeah, he was kicking a right fuss up. I was like, yeah, go for it, Mustafi. But be careful, because the old descent and everything, but still. I, I just definitely penalty for me, yeah. Mm -hmm. Clive? Yeah, it was a penalty, yeah. But yeah. it got me thinking, actually. I sometimes think. Um, Arsenal are like the, the smallest big club in the league. Yeah. And by that, I mean, big clubs sometimes get decisions at home, but, but we don't. We, we've got, we get sending offs at home. We, we manage to give away penalties at home, but 
other big clubs just don't get given against them. And I, I, I want, you know, I want the game to be fair and honest, but yesterday I watched a game at home and I, uh, and then I went to my local football club to watch the Chelsea game. And there was a penalty incident in the Chelsea game where a guy had his Achilles stepped on right in the box. It was even more obvious than the Staffies penalty. At no point did I think that they were Chelsea were going to concede that penalty. I just thought the referee just not going to give it. He just doesn't want the hassle. And it was just play on. But when it's hassle, the referees just can't wait to point. I mean, it's like they don't want to point on our ones, but they can't wait to point when it's against us. I'm still annoyed by the Tottenham one. And um, we're going to talk about you know that one yesterday. Did we deserve it? Yes, we probably did. But, um, you know, things levelled out later on. But I never felt we would get it. You know, and that's the thing. And it's the scenes that we seem to be the club, the big of the big clubs. I know we're a bit one-eyed, but they don't seem to get the break on those decisions as, as often as we'd like. Mm, I 100% agree. I think it's as well is, is the... Um... Initially, it was only Mustafi that was appealing for that for that penalty. They weren't really. I don't think we've got. You know, I, I moan about it, but with Chelsea and Man United, if one little minuscule thing happens, Rooney's there like a hawk. Terry used to go like they all used to run. You know, Ibrahimovic complained they're the biggest bunch of babies you'll ever play against Chelsea because they all go in like a V formation, like aeroplanes, round the referee, don't they? And they're like, hey, 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 and we don't really do that, do we? Not as much as we should. No. no Mustafi was cute, right? He, he knew he could get there. If he got there first, he knew that Andre Gay hadn't seen him properly. And mm. um, there was a chance of contact. And he was ready for it. He got himself off the ground and he got the contact. But the referee took that move as a, OK, you played for it and didn't give him the benefit of the doubt. So we moved on. Yeah, yeah. Well, he uh, made up for it afterwards. Uh, another brilliant corner from Ozil. And then uh, he gets his first goal. Lovely stuff. I think it was the first time as well. Burnley didn't put a player on the post, so uh, he, he he reads the ball really well as well. If you watch the uh, replay back, because he makes that good, clever run that outtakes the um, long-haired one. Is it Brady or something? His name is. He, he does him like a kipper, and then he slots the header, and it's lovely goal. Right, uh, can I talk about that? So yeah, go for it. In the first half, I've got this big thing about having um, two players on the post, and I said to my cousin, and Giles was next to me. Um, I said to them both, look at that, see, they have two players on the post. That's exactly what we should be doing every corner. Every corner they had two players on the post, apart from when we scored. If he would have had someone on that post, he would have kicked it off the line. So I was a bit, it was a bit odd for me because I was talking about it. I've always said Arsenal should do this. We used to. We used to in the old days. Um, yeah, Fair enough, for man. On match of day two last night, they picked up on it. And uh, that guy, Stephen DeFore, was on the post for every single corner, apart from the one we scored from. So it was, it was strange. He was on the corner for every single one, on the post, sorry. But that one, he moved out to the edge of the area, and they picked up in the match of day, I thought. So we just headed it in. And then and if you're Sean Dykes, you're probably thinking, look, I had a plan, and the player's forgotten it. He's walked away, and they've scored from it. So I'll be docking his wages straight away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. I think it was a an an error judgment error or whatever you say. Error of judgment. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> error of judgment because they did have. Every, I didn't notice that on match the day actually, but um they did have everyone. They did have two on every corner except that one when we scored. And then um obviously a bit of time goes on. And uh, I was going to leave it for later, but we might as well slot it in because it's all chronological order, isn't it? So it fits nicely. Uh, we've got to talk about it. Uh, Granite Xhaka. Now, for me, this guy is on the ball. One of the most technically beautiful footballers I've watched in a long, long time. But without it, I can't put it in other, any other word, but he's, he's a bit of a dickhead. <laughs> he's, just, he's just a bit of a silly person. What, what, Amanda, you're in the ground. What, what did you all make? Did you... Because there's people that have said it's harsh. I'm like, you, you can't do that. Whether um, it's harsh or not. I mean, he, ba- he barely touches the bloke. The bloke's made a meal out of it. And I mean, he's frustrated because he's, he's, he's played a really bad pass. I mean, he had space the other side of him. If he just turned around and looked up, he had acres of players behind him, but he just went the wrong way. I'm angry with him, to be honest. Again, that's virtually in front of me. Um, definite red. Didn't hesitate. Everyone around us went... <gasps> Like that. We all know, 
you know, we saw the tackle. You heard the when the crowd goes so silent, yeah. you just know. You and can hear it. yeah, you can hear the and it just goes silent. No one was angry. Um, you can't do that. I'm angry with him. The way I was angry with Giroud. Do you remember that day he headbutted someone or he elbowed someone? Oh, what, PSG? Yeah, I think yeah. it was. And he got sent off. That was down my end again. Um, and we went mad at him. And he has really, really upped his game on that, Giroud. And I'm hoping now that Xhaka will... I wanted to put him on the naughty step, to be honest, <laughs> because I've had enough. Three seasons, nine times off. Now, I, you know, I've, uh, I saw a tweet um, yesterday from a guy that went, and now you wonder why Arsene Wenger doesn't trust him. Arsene Wenger bought him. So, excuse me, I'm not having that. But what I'm angry about was, you're right, James, on the ball. He's superb. What is it? He has cost us four games. We don't have all our midfield fit. One's of the African nations. Two of them are injured. We, we, he's put us in a major position. He would have played every game. I'm angry. Definite red for me. The only thing is I've seen people split on whether we should have clapped him off the pitch or not. You know, I've always said this, right? You may never, there may be a time you don't like your family, but you're always going to love them, right? Um, it doesn't, <laughs> des- it doesn't, des- oh, there's many times I do not like Arsenal. <laughs> But you'll always. I thought you were going to say your family then. (laughs) (laughs) Or them as well. Yeah. Um, And, you know, my cousin said, What are you clapping him for? And I said, I don't know. I said, Because I'm so angry with him. I don't want him to go off like a buoy did that night. He didn't go off to booze anyway, Xhaka. But I'm disappointed. I feel let down. I feel like if, if he learns from this, then fair enough. But he's put us in a very, very difficult position. And I. No need for it. We were one nil up in our heart, in their half. There was no need to go two footed like that. For me, a definite red. Mm-hmm. Clyde? <laughs> Just listen to the man, they lose it. Right, so, um, so yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, oh, where do I start this one, right? So, we all know, we all saw what technically happened. And you're dead right. I, I watched the game again today, and you can actually hear the crowd gasp. And the tackle goes in. I didn't pick that up yesterday. You could hear it gasp. I thought, oh, God. There was, I mean, he didn't have a lot of forward momentum, but, um, he does this. And I remember, I remember his first game, actually, at Watford away. And he did a tackle in that game that was really quick, really aggressive, really scissored, but he got the ball. If he missed that one, then he would have been sent off in his first game, right? So, I saw a stat today, right, that he's made 91 tackles this season and he's only give, done, had 11 fouls. But of those 11 fouls, he's had two reds and two yellows. So what that tells you is he's tackling in a spectacular way, right? So he's going face on with a off the ground movement and he just tackles spectacularly. He's a big guy. He's hard to miss. I always used to feel the same about Vieira when he first came over. He would make a foul, and because he was a big guy, and because he was quite leggy and gangly, every foul he made ended up in the yellow, and two yellows end up in the red, and we'd always lose him for big games. I'm seeing that's happening to Shaka right now. So let's look at why. Right? So let's look at why. And I've been talking recently about about our midfield and our lack of intensity and and spaces, and I, I, I'm of a feeling when I, before he came to us, I did what everyone else did. I watched him on YouTube. And I watched him spray these balls around and I thought, oh, I can't wait till he comes to us. And when he, when he came to, when I watched him in the Euros for playing for Switzerland, I was actually quite surprised that he played in a, with somebody very close to him, sometimes two people close to him. I thought he was much more of a lone centre mid. But what Switzerland do, they play him with bodies around him because he's not very athletic. But at Arsenal, we, we tend to isolate him a bit and Danny Murphy picked up on this. He's, he's, I don't think he's comfortable when he's isolated. I think he finds it quite stressful to be the lone man on his own at the back trying to hold things together. I think he's a ball player. I think he, he likes doing support line running. I think he likes to go and get the ball, move the ball. He's got, he's got all the passes in his, in his locker. He can dink it both sides. He can chip it. He can fire it for the lines. But I think we expose him slightly in wide spaces. 
So JJ, you've seen me talk about us moving to four three three. I'm a firm believer is it's not because I do like four three three or four three one two. It doesn't really matter. I like three in because I think it makes us more um, solid. Um, but I also look at the players that we have, and I think it suits them. I don't think we've got super athletes in centre mid. I think we've got met- metronomic runners that cover distances, but they're not got the a change of pace apart from Cockerham. So by having three in, I think it makes us more secure. And let's just take you no know, Burnley, for example. Burnley had, I think it was 13 shots against us yeah. and seven on target, right? That's their record. They were record. the most team that uh, had the most shots against us at home since Liverpool. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And uh, and so I'm looking at this. This is Burnley, by the way. He's got one away point all season. So this is not this is not new. You know, I wrote a blog about our, how many shots we have on target versus how many we concede. And our record is not it's not great. It's the worst of the top six. That means we're open. So if I'm the manager, I'm thinking, how can I make us more solid? How can I look at my players and make and maximise them? And, I, and I'm just thinking it is time to to help these people. I like I like this player a lot. I really like his attributes. I really like the developing partnership with him and Ramsey. It's got potential, but I do think they need somebody else with them. I think it would help Shaka. I think it would help Ramsey, who spends a lot of his time in the last third, which only goes to isolate Shaka even more, in my opinion. And we're going to see more of this, because in wide spaces, I think he panics. And he makes spectacular fouls, and he needs to learn to make cuter fouls that don't get him sent off. Mm, you, you talk about wide spaces yesterday. One thing I will say about Burnley, which I thought, you know, I'm not a fan of that style of football, but they clearly did their research, is they were pumping that long ball, especially in the first half, uh, to get Andre Gray wide because they knew that Monreal and even Gabriel to some extent were drawing a bit forward. And then obviously, if you are, if you make Koscielny and uh, Mustafi go out wide, you've got that whole channel to sort of exploit. Did you, did you, did you agree with that, Clark? Uh, I, I did actually. And um, before the game, I did, I did hear some stuff on Sky saying that the team that's played the most long balls in the league was Burnley. Mm. And let's give the manager a bit of credit, right? Because most of us probably thought that Bellerin would be back for this game and he would start. But he kept Gabriel at right back and I think that was a, that was planned because he realised they would go long, there'd be lots of balls in the air and Gabriel, who I thought had an excellent game, um, especially aerially and physically against a very physical Barnes who should have been sent off twice for Elbring Mustafi. I thought it was a very good ploy and later on when we went down to 10, they almost played as a, as a three, very close together. And um, I thought uh, it helped us. We, Mr. Gabriel made one great block in a six-yard box with his backside. I thought it helped us keep a uh, clean sheet until the penalty. So, yeah, I thought Wenger made a great selection in Gabriel right back for that day. And um, it, it definitely worked out. And we brought Bellerin later on and nearly won us a game before we went into the drama. And uh, talking of the drama, let's touch on the, uh, the Burnley goal. Obviously, the throwing comes in and if you look at it closely you can see that Monreal should be a bit more towards the box and Coquelin is uh he thinks Monreal's going to sort of check that run from uh I think it was Barnes as well wasn't it and obviously he drifts in because he's got acres to run in and Coquelin just sees the back of his shirt and it's a silly it's a silly mistake to make but he, you know he, he's got to do it and he really to an extent well does he well, when you're left, when you're left with that chance, you don't, you never know what's going to happen, do you? You got to, it's just re- you react. Well, yeah, again, definite penalty. All three, yeah, of well, them, gotcha. All three of them were. Um, well, four of them. There's the staff as well. No, three. Oh yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah, James. Um, <laughs> two that actually were given. Yeah, definite penalty. I thought Cockerland was a bit rash, to be honest. How long had he been on? About 15, 20 minutes. He, yeah. he was doing fine. He was doing fine. He was. I love Coquelin. I, I feel so much better when he's on the pitch. Thank God he's fit. That's all I can say. Well, you know, hopefully like proper match fit soon. But um, look, it is what it is. If you if you take if you put your leg out in the penalty area, what's going to happen? The bloke's going to go down. And for me, it was a penalty. What else can we say about it? Is the problem with us is 
it's like panic stations. You know, they were on top then, weren't they, for about 10 or 15 minutes. They were bombarding us. Not not bombarding us, but you know what I mean? They had a lot of possession and they were down out, down that end. I could see it coming. Um, yeah. It was definitely, you know, penalty. What can you do? Yeah, they forced us into our box. They, yeah. they, they forced us back. They were going big diagonal. We were getting deeper and deeper and deeper. In fact, Adrian Clark did a great job on these today on the breakdown. He analysed it beautifully. The problem started from the throwing. We didn't mark them tight enough. So when the ball was, was thrown in, we then engaged. So we're already reacting rather than being, you know, touch tight much earlier in the move. And then the ball drops to Ramsey. Ramsey sticks a leg out. It goes to Cockland on the stretch. He sticks a leg out and he, he doesn't quite control it and thinks, I've got to get it away. And sticks another leg out and the player's fallen over it. He hasn't even seen him, right? So it started from the throwing. We hadn't engaged. We didn't get the ball out first time. We didn't get the ball out second time. Cochlear brings him over. And when it happened, I mean, you sort of, I don't, I don't mean to laugh, but it wasn't a total surprise, was it, when it happened? <laughs> we've, done, we've done this before. Have, I mean, have, you seen, have you seen the videos of Monreal's reaction? Yeah, I've it? seen it. I've it's, seen it. It's the most dramatic thing ever. But I'm, when, I, when I watched it back, I'm like, what are you doing, though? I'm like, Nacho Monreal, for me, I say most of the time, that guy is an 8 out of 10 every game. You know he's solid. He, Dependent, but this season he's been he really his concentration levels have been shocking at times. Uh, maybe it just shows that how much they wanted it as, as a group of players, mm-hmm. right? They knew this was their moment to get out of the league to jump, get some points back, and they they put themselves under a lot of pressure. And um, which makes me even question why we were us, you know, six out of ten in the first half, and we should have really put some intensity into the first half performance. Maybe got an earlier goal and then had a much more easy second half, but. They did work very, very hard to hold that situation and we just switched off on the throw, which allowed the ricochets to go around and then we, you know, Cockland got blindsided and took him down. Definite penalty. You just, you just felt it. You just sort of thought to yourself, this is so us. Every time we reach the mountain top, we find a way to throw ourselves off it. Do you know what I mean? And, um, and, uh, yeah, that's how it felt. And, um, penalty went straight down the middle and Peter Check with his chocolate wrist waved it in. So, um, yeah, even even when he saves one, it still goes in. Yeah, yeah <laughs> one day he's going to save one. One day, and it's going to be one of the most important ones he saves. Well, you have to remember. My words. You have to remember, <laughs> Peter Cech, don't forget, was man of the match in Chelsea's Champions League final. Right? He saved penalty in extra time. I mean, he, this guy is a serious, serious goalkeeper and I thought he paid really really well but we've just got his expectations on him to save penalties which is I think is a touch unfair because every game he makes a big save right and or takes a big cross and I thought some of his reading of crossing yesterday was really really good really proactive oh I like it yeah yeah and he's getting a lot of stick for not saving pens right so uh oh. Let's hope he saves it for our Champions League final this year in Cardiff. That's what, we're <laughs> yeah. for. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Something important. <laughs> very, very true, very true. But um, obviously the, 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 the drama continues. And again, I know I've gone on about it all day, but it was another corner. Mustafi took it this time, plays it short. Sanchez salvages a cross out of it. And uh, whether he's offside or not, he, he's been kicked in the head. So that's a, like we said earlier, that's another definite penalty. <laughs> And then apparently Sanchez is, Sanchez weren't supposed to be the first one to take it. I read apparently he said apparently he said that um, someone else meant to take it. But he went no, I'm having that. No, it's Giroud. Uh, it's Giroud was the first taker, and he yeah. was and he was off. So Sanchez was next up by default. Oh, cool. And then um, yeah, what other player would go right? I'm going to do a Paneka now. And then uh, watch this. <laughs> And he celebrates under his new banner, which obviously splits <laughs> loads of people. And you see Monreal hugging him because I think he realised that he was an idiot for the goal that he conceded. But whatever. I just, I just think that <laughs> no, no other player would do that. Now, again, that's no. that's down my end. I said to Giles, I am not watching. I don't watch us with penalties very, very often. And um, I just thought, did, did you think he would? I, I, I knew he'd do. It. I knew no. he'd score some I thought he's putting this away. I was like, he's, he's definitely scoring. Oh this. no, I sorry, I thought you meant was he going to be cheeky? No, no, no. No. All that came to my mind was this is the last five seconds of the game. This is so Arsenal, and we had a few seconds to think about it. Giles goes, "You're not going to watch." I went, "I'm not watching. I'm just not <laughs> watching this. I don't want to book anything." Um, 
look, you know, going back to it, and I know you're being funny and stuff, he was offside, you know, before he got kicked in the head. But for the thing, the fact that we didn't get one from Mustafi, it, it's even oh, yeah, all that out, in, my, yeah. in my, my eyes. Um, Sanchez, I'm sure we all absolutely adore him. I was on this pod about a month ago and everyone was moaning about his tantrums and I don't give a toss about his tantrums, to be honest. I love the fact he's got that passion when he walks off the pitch. He's like a kid, you know. So, I, I look, we all adore him. I don't know anyone that doesn't. But to do that with five seconds to play, you've got to have some balls. I'm not joking because if you're not going to score that, you're going to be slaughtered, absolutely slaughtered, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, like it's like I, uh, I said, uh, if, if he didn't move and he stood there and he caught it straight and he said, fuck me, he'd be, he'd be slated, yeah, he'd be, he'd be hounded for that. I was thinking before the penalty was taken, who's going to take it? Oh, that's what I was thinking. Like, and I thought, we can't miss this. And I saw him and Ramsey sort of going up and jamming the chat. I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, cool. <laughs> Let's hope it's Alexis, right? So, um, mm-hmm. and, and to be fair, he, he, he won the Chile, the Copa America with something similar, didn't he? Yeah, was, I was going to say, somebody said he's done this before. Yeah, he's done so it before. Like, oh, Copa right. America in his own country, penalty shootout in the final to win it. And he dinks it down the middle. Right, so um, maybe we should have guessed it, right? That he was going to do the same thing again, but it was it was a great moment, right? And he he slid under his banner, and I'm sure Mark was loving that banner. And <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it was. Uh, I want to know: does Mark just hate retrievers, or is it just dogs in general? He wants cats, or I don't is know. it goldfish he likes? Or something? I bet he was <laughs> kissing that banner after and that goal win. So um, so yeah, it was a uh, it was a really really I don't know how it, I'll, I'll tell you what there are times. I go back once a month to the games and, but there are times when you think, oh, I wish I was in that stadium right now. I bet that was rocking in there when that goal went in. So, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just one of those. Can I just mention about the banner? What do you two think? Stupid. Um, I know Clive's not going to say that. Clive's going to be diplomatic. Go on, Clive. Yeah, well, things change in life, didn't they? You have to accept that, you know, things change. I mean, Ten years ago, I wouldn't be sending thousands of tweets in a month. Do you know what I mean? You just wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. You didn't think you'd be watching a game through a, an iPad. Do you know what I mean? It just yeah. things change, life changes, and you know what I. Look, what all, I, I, all I'm saying is, is that my dad's got a West Island Terrier called Cody, little Cody dog, and uh, I'm going to be making a banner for when I next go, and it's going to say Cody Arsenal Supporters Club. I'm going to put that up with, with me Westy and the little cannon on it. Yeah, you just got to accept. Uh, people are different. Uh, people's experiences are different. I mean, I I grew up with Liam Brady, my son. You know, I'm 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 a black guy from a Caribbean descent, and my son's middle name is Liam, and that tells you everything you need to know, right, about how I grew up. Right, so he he keeps asking me, who is this bloke? <laughs> so I get him to watch him. <laughs> but to me, my dad forced me to watch him. And to me, and guys, sort of, you know, my age, Liam Brady was it, right? So um. Things yeah. change. Things change. People's okay. experiences change. You have to respect it. Clive, I, th- yes. I know things change. Okay. <laughs> but, and I know that um, the people behind it are trying to make the club a bit more, it, it, I, I don't even know if up to date's the right word, but that is cringy. Now, I thought about this. At the beginning, I was like, oh, it doesn't matter. But I saw it live. Okay. <laughs> what the hell has this got to do with football? Sanchez and his dogs. Okay, we want to keep him. I know that. Now, can't you have something else? Something... Is that all we can come up with? Because I'm not being funny. I've got friends like all of us from all different clubs, close friends, that are taking the piss out of this. <laughs> Right. And I've got no leg to stand on because I'm with James on this. I, I don't think it's, I think it's so far out of touch. It's like, what's 2017 got to do with that? Yes. Let's do something. Let's be, let's have a bit of cheekiness. Let's have a bit of sarcasm. Let's, let's, you know, do something with, you know, the words all these kids use these days. Right. Let's do something. Yeah. But what's, Clive, when you're saying you've got to keep up with it. 
<laughs> well, the thing is, right, I, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and slaughter it because I don't understand it. <laughs> well, that's what oh. I'm trying to understand. I don't, I don't get understand it. it. But I, care, I just think I it's hilarious. About, I just care about different things, right? So um, mm. I, I'd rather care about our midfield balance than the, than the banner up on the wall. And to be honest, there are many things to take the mickey out of Arsenal for. This is just another one, right? So um, I just don't, you, you, I, you I just don't that, care You say enough, that, Clive, you know, but in the enough. end, you know, in the end, we're, we're the ones laughing because we're scoring a 97th minute Paneka and he's celebrating in front of it. So yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, for all the, for all, for all the <laughs> flack we've got, it's, it's funny that at the end of the day, we are the only club where you'll see a world-class player slide in front of his knees after scoring a 97th minute winner in front of his with dogs. a picture of his dogs. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> what mean, other club does that? Ains, it was down the end. Was yeah, just, yeah, exactly. You know yeah, it was right in front of it. It yeah. didn't dawn on me till we left and someone walking down the steps and went, I bet his dogs were happy. I went, oh. He went, Sanchez. I went, oh yeah, he's in front of the banner. It's, <laughs> do you know what? I can't stand the fact that we are a bit of a laughing stock. We've got other things that make us a laughing stock, but this... This is like, what, I mean, they've got the German flag for Ozil, haven't they, Ozil? It's brilliant, I love that. But this is, I'm, I've got, <laughs> let's not even discuss it. It's very nice that someone wants to do something, but I think we've got more creativity than this in us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I remember, I remember, in, <laughs> I know, I remember well, in the, program, I remember right? in the I programs mean... when I used to go, you used to get the kids that used to draw the pictures. Oh, can't, can't, can't we get one of the kiddies to draw us up something nice? Yeah, a, a football like a junior gunner or something. Oh, Clive, Clive, now be honest now. I know you don't like answering yes or no, but <laughs> do you like that banner? Well, I'm not a fan of the banner. Clive, don't I'm not a fan. I'm not. I'm not a fan of the banner, but I am going to sleep tonight. Do you know what I mean? I'll just keep it in perspective. <laughs> right? Let's keep it in perspective. I am going to sleep. It does, it, and you know what? I can't change it. And it was coming. Once you saw the preview, you thought, this this is coming. You can't stop it. And it's here, right? And so far, it's good luck. What's next? Yeah. We can have mom me out kitchen, uh, cooking in the kitchen. Or, I mean, what's the catch? <laughs> <laughs> what's hey, these, the... Are, this is our, these are our Arsenal people that's doing this stuff, right? So, um, oh, <laughs> this is, they're, they represent us. So, uh, there you go. <laughs> My family's always had a motto: if it feels good, do it, and if it's feeling good for certain people, then crack on. It's not it's like I said, I'm, like Clive said as well. I'm, I'm not, I'm not losing any sleep over it. I just think it's a bit silly. Yeah. But moving back onto football matters, a uh, bit of a uh, bit of talking now about specific players. Yesterday, Clive, me and you had a bit of a uh, gentle laughing together during the first half on the old Twitter. I thought Aaron Ramsey, I mean, he ended up with 93.6%. I thought he was not back to his best best, but I thought he was brilliant, especially first half yesterday. Yeah, I thought he was all right. But I don't, I, I've got to be honest with you. This is why I call Cat C games. In Cat C games, when you're going to get 70% possession, we're not being challenged. Right? We only got challenged in the last 25 minutes when we're down 10 men. Right? So we're not being challenged defensively. This is about how we can break teams down. And this suits Aaron Ramsey, who pushes on, he gets into last third, he, he gets, he, as the ball's travelling, he travels with it, and he gets closer to Rue, he links well with Ozil. And yeah, he had a very progressive game on the front foot, trying to get into the box. And when we're playing these, you know, uh, 10 at the back teams, absolutely perfect for those scenarios, right? Where he can just go and overload, overload offensively. And he played well, but I, I don't think, you know, could we think of anyone that really had a bad game? You know, Drew was a little bit quiet. He Iwobi wasn't as spectacular as he was in the previous game. But this is, this wasn't really about player performance. This was about us. You know, even Shaka before the sending off was having a great game. You know, so, um, we, you know, we, we're a little bit off intensity wise and everyone played quite well, but just a little bit off the levels we needed to make it easy. We caused the drama. And then we had the, you know, the last five minutes, which none of us are going to forget, right? So, um, yeah, it's, I, it's difficult to sort of, what I like about Rams at the moment, he's improving. He's getting fitter. He's moving around the pitch a bit better. The real test, you know, we've got the real test is in a, in a week or so. And what I'm worried about really more than anything, he hasn't got a track record of staying fit and, we we can't really rest him. And we've got the cup game coming up. We've got Watford. We've got Chelsea. 
and he has to play in all three potentially. And um, I just hope he stays fit because the more the more he stays injury free, the closer we're going to get to seeing the better player. I think he's someone that needs games. He needs to play, and then when he gets fitter, I think he does more. He, he he looks better. And to be fair to him, we haven't seen him fit most of the season up until the last two games and. Coincidentally, I think they've been his best two games so far. Yeah, yeah, I hundred percent agree. And uh, it won't be like you said; uh, it was it wasn't his best game. But obviously, statistically, he was uh, he was uh, he was up there as well. But uh, he got hooked off. Need, needs must. Alexis, I thought uh, with Giroud as well. I thought they were both quiet until obviously he popped up and did what he was meant to do. And then um, Gabriel, I thought Clive, like you said, was fantastic out there. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. But uh, if you both had to pick a, a man of the match for yourselves, would you who would you go with? Was it just Alexis for the moment, really? Um, I <clears throat> I think what Clive said before actually, because I was thinking about this, was Gabrielle was great. Um, and Mustafi. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm so, I sort of disagree about Ramsey a little bit in the first half. I don't think he was great. He was. Okay, good. But anyway, sorry, I dig- I digress. You know what I mean? No, that's fine. I mean, um, <laughs> I thought Ozu had a really quiet game and didn't didn't do much apart from his assist for the corner. And then, like like Clive said, I watched a breakdown earlier and they were saying he was brilliant. <laughs> so I'm like, is it just how people see things? It yeah, was brilliant, Ozil. He was everywhere. <laughs> I thought he was really quiet. No, no. Like, Second what we half, don't he, see. this is this is what's so great about football. Because first half, I thought we were very left sided in the way we played. Very left sided. Second half, as soon as the whistle went, Urzel went to the right a lot more. Probably yeah. down your side, Amanda, right? So right to the right a lot more. And he made some lung busting channel runs down there. And that straight away gave us balance because Alexis was very left sided. He was quite right sided. Ramsey went in the middle with, with Giroud to create some bodies in the box. And we had a bit of balance about us. And, um, I really thought Ozil was quite intelligent to work out that's where the space was in front of Gabriel and occupy it really well, which gave Ramsey more room to run into because I felt he would, they were running into each other a bit in the first half, which probably meant he wasn't quite as effective as he was in the second half. But yeah, I thought Ozil was great. I, I tell you what I look for, players in adversity. And what I really liked was when the chips were down, what Gabriel, Mustafi and Koscielny did to hold us as long as they could. And then when we conceded, they all just shot up front and made the second goal, you know, made the penalty happen. Mustafi was left wing, taking corners. He was everywhere. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at him, I'm thinking, yeah, you'll do for me. You, you've got leadership. You're proactive. You, you want it. You've got a heart. And you do anything to get the result. And I thought Mustafi really stood out as well as Gabriel Koscielny. I agree. Well, obviously, uh, with Shaka doing what he done, it's a four-game ban. Uh, we got a question here from Shaka esque but I'll put it in with the other question we got as well. Where he's put with Shaka out for four games, and then he's at the Cup of Nations. Who can Wenger play if Coquelin and Ramsey need a rest? And he's put: Would you put Oxley Chamberlain? Would you put Iwobi? Would you put Niles? I mean, how how do we construct this? centre midfield partnership going forward for these next four games Clive do you want to go oh, first oh god well <laughs> it's what I'm going to do it in two parts right what I think Wenger would do and what I what I would do and what Wenger would do is just he'll play Cochrane and, and Ramsey and, and hope they stay healthy and that's what I think he'll do um, but what I would do is I would play three and I would play them in a, in a V I'd have Cochrane at the base I'd have Ramsey one side to the left, and I'd have one of Oxlade Chamberlain or Iwobi to the right and play three in and say, look, we've lost one of our main players. We've got to get players closer together. That's what I would do, and I'd have three up. I'd have Alexis. I'd have, I'd hope to get Walcott back. And I'd have, a, I'd have Ozil, and I'd play a 4-3-3 or 4-3-1-2, and I would go that way. And that gives us bodies in the middle, small distances, and because we're lacking that playmaker by having bodies closer together we can create small combinations and, and, and do it that way which suits our technical game anyway that's what I would do but I'm sure Wenger's going to play Coquelin and Ramsey and he'll play Coquelin behind and what's going to happen when that happens if you're Chelsea the first thing I would do if I was Conti I'd say right every time Coquelin gets the ball 
and Rams to get the ball in a, in a situation where they haven't got their heads up, press them. That's my trigger. Go and press them. See if we can win it from them there. And um, and that's what and that's why I do. The well, reason why I'd like to have a third man in midfield is very hard to press the three men tight together, and then we can play our way out and play out the press. So that's my worry for Chelsea, and I don't think Watford are good enough to test us. Southampton, that's that's fifty fifty that game. It really is. Uh, that could go either way. Um, so yeah, it's it's a worry, but that's what I would do. Yeah, and Amanda, um, <clears throat> when you said if they need a rest, they're not going to have a rest. We are, <laughs> they'll be playing every game. And I was thinking about that at Chelsea, actually, because I'm going to Chelsea. I haven't been there for many years. I've had not to go back. I had a little bit of an incident there in the 90s. But um, <clears throat> I'm a little bit worried about that. <laughs> not me personally. I'm a little bit worried about that with um, the pressing on Ramsey and Coquelin. I can't deal with another 6-1. I just couldn't. But um, going back to what you were saying, you know, he has got, <clears throat> a Wobie to play. Hopefully, if we can keep. What about Theo? Is he still alive? Is he? <laughs> There's no mention of him. It's like, is he coming back? Because that that'll give us some width on the right, won't it? And he needs options. He's going to because four games we've got. Is it Watford, Chelsea, Hull? Who's the other one he misses? So, uh, Southampton. Oh yeah. yes, Southampton Saturday. Well, I mean, um, there was talk of Zellalem going to Dortmund, and he's kept him, isn't he? He's still there, and he said something it? about no, he's he said something about um, he, he's still in his plans. So I'm wondering if Zellalem might get a chance to. I know he's not a defensive midfielder per se, but I'm wondering if Ramsey does tire out, you know, maybe chuck him out for a bit, see if he can, see if he no, can do something. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think he's physically strong enough. That's that's what yeah. I've seen. Uh, yeah. One of my other teams is is Glasgow Rangers. I watched him a lot last year, and um. And he was there, and he did okay, but he sort of faded physically as the games came tougher towards the end of the season, and he dropped out of the side. I don't think he's really built up physically as it, and developed that way as much as they'd hoped. And his contract's up in the summer, and I don't think they're going to offer him a new one. Right? So um, yeah. let's see if he leaves in January or not. Mm-hmm. And um, moving on as well, we haven't spoke about it at all, so we might as well chuck it in now. Uh, the boss, uh, he had a bit of a incident. I hope that Arsenal as a club have decided to give that security guard or steward bouncer, whatever you want to call him, a race, because uh, he saved Wenger there. I think he would have got in even more trouble. Uh, was it in discipline or was he showing passion? Both. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I, think he was, I, dis- I disagree. I think he was but... angry. Um, I don't think it's passion, maybe anger. Um, lack of discipline. Um, sometimes, James, you know, spur of the moment, he's angry. You know, we don't often see him like that, do we? So, I, I, the only time he gets up off his hands is when it's a decision that hasn't gone our way. If we score a goal, or if he's complaining. <laughs> and uh, for me, yesterday, I just thought that's typical you. You, you, you just, you just got caught up in it. And uh, as soon as he shoved him, I'm like, yeah, that's it for you. I'm like that's a four. That's a probably a four game ban for you. There. I mean, there's people saying he should get community service or something. I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, calm it, Dan. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, he's, he's just shoved. I mean, Sean Dyche was shoving him most of the game as well. He didn't get so, sent so off. Amanda, so, could you see the shoving from from the ground, or was it out of cover? Was it? No, out? no. Okay. The, the, are we talking about the shoving that was just in the tunnel? That yeah. Part? Yeah. Right. No. Although it's opposite me, it's quite. I'm not. I'm not central um, on the halfway line. Um, no, we didn't. We just. We everyone went. Oh, he's been sent off. And my dad wasn't there, and he was messaging me going, "He's been sent off." I went, oh, "I don't really care." Well, so I don't care. I'm more worried about the fact that he's one all. You know. So it. What? It's not really a big thing for me. He shoved a fourth official, and people are talking about ten games out of the ground. What? The? Seriously, fine him. Couple of games up in the director's box. It's not a big deal. He hasn't punched anyone. He's pushed somebody. Right? So what, the way I looked at it, right? Um, do you remember Alan Pardew when he pushed a, an official in full view of everybody? Yeah. And he, and he apologised. And he got a two-game ban for that. Right? So that's the precedent that's been set. Wenger, what, what he was doing, uh, what's his name? Uh, Anthony Taylor. Followed him, yeah. sent him off. He followed him down the tunnel. And the sky cameras 
could have a great view down the tunnel. Without that camera there, that's out of view. That's why I asked you, could you see it, Amanda? That's out of view. This is an out of view incident that's happened that's normally out of view from the general public. That means you're not inciting the crowd. You're not doing something in front of people that could be deemed to be, you know, to affect the kids on Sunday morning, et cetera, et cetera. It's happened out of view. I'm not saying that's, that's correct, but we should put it in this context, right? And all he was, Fenger was doing was getting him to just turn around and watch the game. He just wanted to watch the game. And he was trying to push him out and say, look, just turn around, turn around. And he, Andy Taylor was sticking to his guns. He wanted him out of view and he had to go inside. That's all that happened. So without the sky camera lens, no one would have seen it in the ground. He wouldn't have been picked up. So uh, for me, if Pardew pushed somebody with a real robustness and got a two game, I think Wenger should get something similar because it's Wenger and it's got the presser after him and Keith Hackett's after well, this him, is, this, is the, this is the thing. This is the thing. I was thinking to myself, like, are they going to give him a big one now just to make an example? Well, they might do. To like, I read today, okay. sorry, JJ, I yeah. read today, well, I read last week, actually, that the FA are relaunching the respect campaign for referees. And they just decided to do it last week because there's been a shortage of rest in local football, et cetera, et cetera. So then all of a sudden, sudden Arthur Wenger comes along and pushes the fourth official. They've got an opportunity now to relaunch the campaign, set an example, and the Arsenal manager could be the unlucky guy with timing, you know? So, um. Does it matter? Do, do we care if he's there? Well, I, I, I think it, I think it does matter because, you know, we're talking about new managers and, you know, one day, and we all talk about replacements, etc. None of us are saying Steve Bold is up for the job. Yeah, so there is exactly... He must have some credentials, though, because you've got to remember Sunderland were looking at him for a long yeah, time. And there was that rumour of Stoke as well. You yeah, that's because he's played for one and played for the other. No one no yeah. one else, right? So none of us are saying when Wenger goes, Steve Bolt should get that job. No. Right? So that tells you everything you need to know, right? So it's, it's a concern for me. If we go to Chelsea without a major on the sideline, well, that could that could really happen. Um, but you know what? I'm not against how he felt was how all of us felt at that moment in time. And if he'd have chinned him, that's exactly how I felt. You know? So um, so yeah, I'm not against him showing a bit of angst. But um, obviously, the results afterwards could well, the price we pay could be quite significant. Oh, I don't know. As James says, he hardly gets up anyway. <laughs> but um, anyway. It's probably the age now. He's probably too tired. You know, he's like, I don't want to get out there. He looks like a granddad, doesn't he? Yeah. Granddad, yeah. Um, what do I call him? Bean. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, just, I, just, I do worry because I remember, I can't remember how many years ago it was when he got a ban and Pat Rice had to look after the team for the game, and he just looked up the whole time, like, "What do I do now?" <laughs> because he, he he couldn't even communicate by phone or nothing, could he? And he literally Pat Rice the whole game was just looking up, looking up, and I think we did get the result. But in the interview afterwards, he just said, "Oh, you know, uh, everything Mr. Wenger said." And everything. I'm like, "Don't call him Mr. Wenger. You can you can call him Arsene. Don't." <laughs> but he's uh, such a pro, Pat Rice. Yeah, if he like, gets a ban, someone actually might be able to make a sub before 69 minutes. <laughs> How exciting would that be? We wouldn't know what to do. I don't know. It's uh, make or break time for Baldy, though, isn't it? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's go into the listener questions now. I've got a question here from Dougie Cazorla at the Fresh Ten. He's put, given a Coquelin and Ramsey midfield at Chelsea, how does this team adapt around them and make that partnership work, Clive? You you had a touch on it a bit earlier. Do you do you, are you still going to stick by the yeah, same thing? I, 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 I know, I know, Ducky all that. He knows exactly what yeah. I'm going to say, right? Uh, he's uh, he does leave a question every week. Yeah, he's well, a good guy. He, I like that. He knows exactly what I'm going to say, and basically, he knows I prefer a, a three in, right? And that's it. And it's it's not because we have to do that every single game. I'll just look at the players that we have. I just think they suit that formation a little bit more. So um, maybe he'll be forced to do that if he wants to give Maitland Niles some time on the pitch. It's much easier to do that in the three than in the, than in the two. So um, let's, I think the cup game can show us something really how he how he gets around this situation at Southampton. Mm-hmm. And Amanda, um, I think that's it. I'll go with Clive on that. <laughs> 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 I couldn't really think of anything else to say, but yeah. Diplomat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got a question here from AFC 
underscore badges put is John Moss Mike Dean in disguise and then we got another one from Michael Visser at MV The Gunner do you think video technology is needed now since the refereeing in most of these games are getting worse I'm split on it <clears throat> I'll say it very quickly I'm very split on video referee um, video you know what I'm saying technology I can't even speak tonight because <laughs> it's ha- we could argue over whether we I mean we all say that the three penalties were yesterday you know the two penalties were and the one that wasn't given we all agreed on that straight away. So did match of the day. So did everyone. But there are many times where I've argued with people and said it wasn't handball. It was handball. It wasn't a penalty. It was. How long is this going to go on for? And I just feel that referees sometimes are given a bit of a tough time. If they see it, they're going to give it, right? But some of the officials uh, are not are not good enough. Um, so the linesmen, right? They're not up with play. So what we're going to find is, what are you going to do? Stop, start the game every five. I don't want to go to American football. I don't want that. But then on the other hand, um, we need something. We need some improvement with the officials. So I'm really split on it, to be honest. Yeah, this is, this is a podcast on its own, right? So, um, yeah. No, seriously, it's a massive topic. And my my view is... One of the greatest things about football is our interpretation of it. If you look at the rule book, it mentions the word interpretation all the time. And we're talking about players tonight. We've had a discussion about Ozil, Ramsey, Shaka. We've all got a different interpretation about how they played. And that's, that's, that's part of it. And when you see incidents, we have an interpretation of what they mean to us. And we can't help but be a little bit one-eyed about that. For me, I, I wouldn't want to change the fabric of the game too much. But what I would say is that the goal line technology has really helped. And things like, is it a penalty inside or outside of the box? If you've decided it's a penalty by your interpretation as a referee, but you're not sure whether it's inside or outside, I think that should be, that should be allowed to be referred. You know, and, um, sometimes you'll get a situation where you, you cross a ball and the ball's gone out and you've scored from it. I think someone should be able to say, can we just check if that ball went out? Because you don't want to see a goal that shouldn't be a goal. Do you see what I mean? A, uh, imagine Frank Lampard's goal in the World Cup the other year, being disallowed for being two foot other line. That just can't happen any longer. And, and we don't, we get goal line technology. We've all accepted it. I think lines, facts. I think definitely that should be the next thing. But I like a referee managing the game via his own interpretation, what he sees and what he feels on the day and what the atmosphere is. And John Moss, I was never a fan of John. Well, I used to be a fan of John Moss, actually, because John Moss was a referee when we played Villa in the cup final. And I thought he gave us a great day that day. right? And um, But I think he's got the ump with Granite Shackle because he sent him off twice. I just don't think he likes him. right? So, um, But you know what? That's John. Uh, there's John Moss. There'll, be Mike Dean. There'll always be somebody. But uh, I'd like to leave the game as much as, it, much as I can as it is, really. Yeah, I just think there's too many of these refs that want to grab the headlines themselves. I mean, there was that talk the other day of, uh, what was it, oh, what's his name? Is it Mariner going to China or something, getting a big budget just to go ref in China? Oh, I've not read that, but, um, yeah. but the, the situation with referees in, in country is pretty poor. We're meant to have, I think, 10 referees on the on the FIFA list or UEFA list. We've only got seven that are qualified to do it, which is the lowest we've ever had. And basically, our refereeing standards are falling. So we have to really look after the ones that we have at the top level. Well, they're being overplayed, if that's possible. And they are turning up to games and making more and more bad decisions because they're refing too many games. They haven't got the right level of support. They haven't got the right level of mentoring. And it's, and it's an issue, right? So we need to get more referees through to the top level. But every single situation, every single decision is magnified and, and discussed, discussed on Twitter. I mean, it's a profession that I wouldn't want to do. And, um, but without them, we've got no game. So I think we need to, uh, even though they annoy us, we need to recognise them that without them, that we've got nothing. We've got nothing to watch. Yeah, yeah. We've got a question here from Monsieur R. Thompson, who's at loop underscore Narat. I hope I've got that right. If I haven't, sorry, mate. That's just- I'm just not French, so <laughs> apologies. He put, should we be concerned that teams keep applying long balls over the top down the channels with decent success against us? Who's that to you, JJ? I'll leave it to you, Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I touched on it a bit earlier, but yeah. Well, I call it the Cooman approach, right? Cooman did it at Southampton last year. 
He did it again with Everton this year, with Valencia and Lukaku. He goes long, he goes early. He puts our centre-halves under stress. Burnley do it anyway, but I thought they did it pretty well yesterday by playing two up a lot of the time. And um, yeah, I think it's a, an issue for us, but I thought we dealt with it okay. And let's just not let's not overplay a little bit. Without the sending off, that was a 2 nil game, right? So it um, could have been a 3-0 game. But uh, it changed the whole dynamics of it. But it is something that we have to beware. And there's no coincidence that all three of us are saying that the three centre-halves at the back were our best players, really, on the day. Because they had to work. Even in a game where we're playing the team with the worst away record, they had to work very hard in that game. And uh, I thought it all played really well. But the reason why it's happening, JJ, is we're not pressing the ball high anymore. And that brings into a discussion around Giroud, you know, Sanchez, who should play centre forward. You know, we're not pressing okay, the ball. See, high. this is this is this is my worry for the weekend. I know Claude uh, Claude Peel's a different manager altogether, but I just have a look at it and I think that I think that James Ward Prowse is such an underrated player that I think he's going to be pinging the balls in trying to get Shane Long in. Like, because I watched a bit of the Southampton game um, this weekend as well and. He he had Wes Morgan than that on toast, didn't he? he? Kept playing that ball over the top, and Shane Long's he's an irritating fucker as a, fo- of a footballer. He gets right on the shoulder of him and everything, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does. Can see but anyone back. anyone has got time to get his head up and play a thirty yard ball. Anyone can do it. It's, but you've got to put him under pressure, right? And we've laid off on the pressing side of things, so uh, we've got to decide how you want to play. Do you want to control the ball by having multiple midfielders on the pitch, or do you want to say we're going to press from the front like when the Lexus plays there? and get your heads down with the ball high and then play from there. So at the moment, we're playing Jerusalem-style football, which is not very intense on the pressing side of things. Um, but he scored five goals, you know, five goals in the last five games up until yesterday. So um, with Giroud up front, we're getting picked off over the top. But, you know, he scores goals and we're not losing many games. So, but it's, you know, we can't really do much about it. Yeah, and we've got a question here as well. It says, do we have to sell Jack Wilshere this summer to get a proper defensive midfield in? Xhaka is ill-disciplined and Francis Coquelin isn't good enough. And then someone else has put, do we need defensive cover slash central midfield cover in the market? And they've put Keita, Red Bull, Leipzig. Amanda, you love transfers. No, I'm not discussing it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I don't want Jack to go. I want Jack to come back. He should never have gone yeah. in the bloody first place. But, well, yeah, I think he should have had a recall calls for January when we get our injuries, which is always. Can I ask Giles's question? Yeah, yeah go for it. Yeah, pop okay, it in. Okay, so you two can answer this. Well, we can all answer this. He wants to know what goal you think is more important. Let me read it to you. Hold on one second. Which moment was more dramatic? Welbeck winning header versus Leicester last season or Alexis' penalty yesterday against Burnley? It's Welbeck for me. Well, I'm hoping it's yesterday, but it all depends on what happens next week because after Welbeck did that last season, we went to, was it Man United and Swansea? Was that the week after? And we <laughs> we then had the, what, the week from hell. And um, so I'm hoping that yesterday means something a little bit more than that goal did. And that only, that only matters what we do in our next game. I thought yesterday was great. I really thought it was great. I thought it was, it looked to me like a major moment in the ground. And I, I, and I was guided not to be there, to be honest. But I'm with JJ on this. It has to be Leicester. Has to be. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was like Roy the Rover's stuff. He come on and <laughs> scores and just go <laughs> ballistic. But yeah, yesterday was second for me. Yeah. No, just from the point of view of, we went top after that, didn't we? So uh, there was that glimmer of hope, yeah. whereas I think now I've I've sort of conceded the league now. I, I'd, I, you know, I know it's still early, but I, I don't know. At that time, I thought maybe, maybe, but I mean, yesterday, all right, we got the points, and it's we're still in the chase, but I, I, I can't. No, see no, it. can I? I can't see it. Sadly, sorry, sorry, everybody, yes. sorry to put a damper on it at the end. <laughs> But uh, I'll wrap that up here because I know you guys have got to shoot off. So uh, thank you very much, Amanda. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And thank you very much, Clive, as always. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. Thanks a lot. Spot on, sir. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, keep keep on the account. We've got the midweek pod coming up. I think Giles and that will be back for that one. So uh, enjoy that midweek. And take care. 
Subscribe, like, comment, comment on iTunes, everything else. Keep interacting with us on Twitter. We love it. Can so, I just like, say one thing? Sorry, no. Go for it. Say it. I Go for it. I to say that all our thoughts go out to Ryan Mason and just hope that he recovers very quickly. Yeah, yeah. That's a terrible, terrible injury. Awful. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I agree. thanks, James. I agree. You're welcome. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for listening. Take care. Bye. This podcast is sponsored by Panda Design a design company specializing in graphic and web design, along with complete brand and marketing solutions. Visit www.pandadesign.com, that's double I in design, and mention Gooner Ramble for 10% discount on orders over 250 pounds.